Hello, my friends! Today we are going on a very special adventure. We're back here in Isleshire, and Slowfix has a job for us. Now, if you recall, at the very end of the 3.0 main story, Sid and Yastola are chilling out right outside in the hinterlands. There's some gobbies doing God knows what. And this mechanical being rises out of the river. Yep, yeah, yes, yeah, slow fix. It's okay, it's okay. Friends, citizens, remember, we're here to help. Oh, hi. Okay, why didn't you just call me? Well, that is kind of what primals do. They suck aether from the land that that is why they cannot be suffered to live yeah yeah now you tell him slowfix it's all right it's all right i'm the warrior of light this is kind of my job Uh, excuse me, what do you mean I am to rejoin Sid? Yes, I'm going to slay this primal because it's my day job, but uh, I don't think you're wise to be bossing me around about this. Okay? You know, at least other people are usually tend to at least try to be like, Oh, uh, sorry to have to ask you this, but... Uh, you have this lovely power called the Echo to rend you immune from primal influences. C can you kindly go in there and kick its butt? Lest the rest of us potentially become slaves to the primal and that's where we go. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh my god. Idol shot are so lagging. Like, there we go. See, my mount isn't even showing up. I do not like that when that happens, Sam I am. So how on earth are we going to tackle a primal of this size? I mean, look at this guy. Thing. You can't see- yeah. See, you can even see part of him from all the way over here. He's massive and you can only see his hand. Hello! Yes, we did. However, did you know? I don't believe we've been properly introduced, have we? I don't know. No, oh, the Illuminati get- I already kicked their butts. Uh, yeah, she- she's going to enlist the help from her old master, and I don't think said master will ever be mentioned again in this endeavor after this. At least I don't think. That we do. Well, it's a machine. And a primal, apparently. Maybe let's put our heads together. And, and figure out what we need to do about this, okay?
his hand is outside of it. Only three years ago? Well, Charlayans left a long time before that, so apparently it's not their doing. Oh, Slowpix has a daughter! That's so sweet. Oh my god, she sings like Tataru. That is adorable. Go up to her and say hello! Sid, you need to learn your gobby speak. Well, Sid, Sid the thing's huge. It would only seem natural that something that big might cause an earthquake. I mean, it's not entirely unfair for you to assume that a tremor opened up enough of a morass to allow this to come through. Hi. Uh, why can't I converse with Brave Fox too? I'm kind of right here. Okay. Okay. No. 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 How about wait a second? How do? How about I talk with Brave Fox? I'm a little bit more familiar. And you go talk to your two assistants. Hi, who are you? Game, stop being a turd. Ooh. Ooh, Uplander would like to know more. Why, phone, why did you disconnect me? That, ignore that, that is my virtual keyboard. I swear, the Illuminati likes to screw with that because the only time I've ever had problems with that app is when the Illuminati gets mentioned. I am blaming it on them. 100%. Which what? What's going on? Who are you? Hi. Okay. Well, how did he get on Link Pearl Communications with them? Let's blow it up or smash it with a hammer. Is it like Morse code or things like that? Maybe we should write down what they're saying just to be sure. Oh, well we were just there. It's worth a shot. How about we trade for said doohickey, assuming we find one? Hello, Rondrox. Um, kind of sorry to have to do this. It, it would be much more polite. 
Do not ask him why he calls him that. <laughs> it would be very polite of us for us to ask before we just sprinkle stuff among your pile of treasure. Yeah. It, yeah, I'm so- Ronrox, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the plot demands it. I'm very, very sorry, sweetheart. It is for a very good cause, and I should have asked. But I'm an RPG, and RPG heroes are kind of meaty pants sometimes. Okay, alright, alright, alright. I can- I can- I can deal with that. Again, why can't we trade for this? Maybe give some Jiggly Shine? Or another treasure of ours? Something? Anything? Okay, Wedge, I did as you asked, but this is her favorite treasure. Do not break it, do not lose it, otherwise I'm gonna sick her on you, because this was your idea. What do you mean no burns? Is that shit radioactive or something? They say you're ugly and you smell bad. Well, all goblins think we smell bad, but the Illuminati really think we smell bad. Yeah, exactly. What bigs? I was just about to get into that. Like they're obviously crafty enough to encode their messages. It seems kind of natural that they would also use code words inside their messages, knowing full well that maybe another goblin could actually decipher it. Hi, who are you? Okay. Uh, are you also aware that robot is also a primal? Okay. He has a name. Mayhap if you would actually ask for it, he might give it to you. You seriously were engineers and, and we didn't think of this? But where is 12 o'clock? I think that's important to know, otherwise you have no context. Hi guys! You nearly crushed your little buddy bags. Be a little bit more careful. Okay, now that we figured out how to apparently activate or open this thing, can Ron Rocks have her glowy stone back? I'm sure she'd very much appreciate it. Yeah, this thing is also a primal. I, th I think it's very important we do not forget about this. We can't treat it as just a machine.
Uh, if you don't mind potentially being tempered by this thing. I don't know if you have the echo. It, yeah, you'll be an excellent meat shield. Uh, this was not part of the agreement, Sid. I don't disagree with you, but this was not part of her agreement to offer her services. Uh, can it be also accessed by the duty finder? So, yeah. But first, we need to talk to everybody first. Okay, alright, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Okay. Alright, so let us form a party for this little expedition. Uh, Expedition English, you are hard right now. And we'll get our butts right in there. And well, I guess we're gonna have to just wait until what we see. We have, I have no idea what we're gonna face in here, guys. Like, not like I've been actually in, legit inside a primal before. That's kind of an interesting prospect, but. in the world are we gonna find inside here? Well, things are definitely moving. Very steampunk in here. Although I suppose it's kind of natural for a machine, but we had no way of knowing if this guy was hollow or not. You know, he very well could have been primal and all that. I kind of like some of the use of angles in here and that you know not everything is it's just straight and perpendicular I mean we are climbing a living and breathing thing that's kind of half tilted in the water so that that's kind of nice and interesting uh, I know it's meant to be obviously a steampunk motif in here but I can forgive him on some level obviously as a result of that but at the same time, everything is just so much the same color. Like, you, you honestly could make partially the same argument for uh, Binding Coil. But at least that one had like these awesome like electric blues and it certainly brightened the place up if, if not for anything else. And here it's just all, it's all just brown and gray and all neutral colors and again it's it's a bit understandable but it, it doesn't really make it any prettier to look at and of course inside a robot we fight more robots I mean I'm not sure what else I expected but what about the Illuminati I mean they're in here too aren't they So of course we're actually kicking the crap out of this thing because, again, everybody is completely overgeared. But that matters not in the context of what we're doing. We're just here more to experience the actual story rather than the fights themselves. So we'll live. We will live. Top heavy. I, I guess it makes sense in in some context. Simply by by virtue of to have something that mobile, well, you can't have it too bulky where you have your most movable parts. 
Okay, okay, all right. That that eye, that's his left eye, just just staring and moving slowly. Oh, okay, that, that's a little bit creepy. Uh, I meant to cast the region on the tank first, but whatever, whatever, we will live. So yes, uh, oppressor is armed to the teeth with guns, like. He's got guns on his shoulder, he's got guns for fingers, and it wouldn't actually surprise me if he had guns in his shoes too, but I think he decided to let Bayonetta uh, kind of just take that one for herself and not copy her, I guess. Maybe? I don't know. Do not know. So yeah, lots of pew pew from this guy. He shoots fire lasers and everything. Like, he shoots lasers out of his eyes. Though I suppose it's kind of par for the course for robots who want to kick my ass. You know, it's not, it's not like a lot of them actually fight with uh, martial arts. But what do I know? What do I know? Like, like, imagine if the Garleans got a hold of this kind of tech. So, so is this thing autonomous, or is there someone or something inside operating it? Honestly, don't know. Don't know who's in charge of this thing. Is this the Illuminati who made these robots and is beating the crap out of us, sensing an intrusion? Or is it the actual robot himself? Their own defense mechanisms. We have no idea. I don't think we ever kind of find out that information ourselves. And that's one thing that kind of always baffled me about this fight, these fights. They're, they're very cool and they're very fun. But in comparison to Coil, like, I... I don't have as much of an idea of what I'm looking at, what I'm actually doing. Okay, I, I'm in here because it's primal. Okay. It, it would be nice to hear a little bit more lore on that kind of front. And that's one of my actual biggest disappointments about Alexander is that we don't get that kind of depth. So that was easy. We didn't actually see the next phase of the fight. Yeah. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention the fact that there was two of them? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Robot was probably like, oh, shit. Well, they're kind of getting their jump on me, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, backup partner, get over here. Get over here! So we don't need any of this loot because it is very old. So we're gonna scarp a lot of here. Or rather, quote-unquote, well, actually, no, technically, we're not going deeper. Because unlike Coil, we're not unlocking the turns consecutively, and that one turn leads you to the next and leads you to the next with cutscenes in between. They actually split this up. Well, most likely by virtue of the fact that it is now a easy, much easier story mode comparison to Coil. And obviously much easier, so they had to separate it because you're not going in here with a full raid group. Hi. What are you in here for, by the way? You, you, you said there was something you wanted to retrieve. What is it? You know, maybe we can help you actually look for it. Oh! Hi! Round rocks? Why did say and Biggs and Wedge and them let you in here? It's a bit dangerous in here.
Um, uh, yeah, why am I agreeing to this? Primal, remember? Capable of tempering. Also very powerful, drains Aether from the land. Probably able to kick our asses. I don't think Slowfix would be very pleased if we accidentally were to um, allow mortal harm to be inflicted upon his daughter. How do you know what you seek? Well, hello again, um, hi, random cat. Didn't I already kick your butt? Yes, dear, we are already acquainted, although you would have no way of previously knowing that. Okay, so gunpowder on the back, we ignite it, we all go boom. Okay. Okay. Well, who says we're not willing to be that suicidal if it gets rid of the primal in the process? Okay. Uh oh. Some minion's gonna get the crap beat out of him tonight. You know, that could have been like C4 or something in there, girl. Really? I mean, I'm glad it was more like simple fireworks, but yeah. Way to almost get us all killed. Gee, thanks. Some kind of book, I guess. I don't know. Okay, stop touching your face. It gets kind of creepy. So that's what you're here for? G guys, we don't know what's down there. Like, how do we know that was an escape shoot? I, I have no idea. Wow, okay, massive delay in what's being added to the loot list, even though it's been several minutes. Way to go, game. No, 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 Gert, my, or whatever the hell you pronounce your name, that's how I'm just how I'm gonna pronounce it. Um, that's just gobby speak. They don't mean it as actual junk. Like the way we think of junk. They think of junk as like doohickeys, doodads, thingamabobs, what's a mahoozits, stuff like that. It's, it's just a term. Oh, you even remember where you found them all. Oh, you are smart.
It's an expression! Dang it, Wet Biggs. I, oh, why do I always get you and Wedge mixed up? I think it's because Wedge I find more funny. Yes, of course I am ready. I am always ready. Primal slang be my job. Do you guys still have any idea of what we're supposed to do? Yeah, see, see, it's a very good idea to still listen to them. Even if they're aware that we have, have figured out their access codes and can totally decipher what they're saying, well, they still need time to actually think of a new code. And until then, they still need to formulate a plan because, well, now they have infiltrators. Plus, they're gobbies. I mean, nobody said they were geniuses or anything. So, did we go back in through the same door and pick another tunnel or something, maybe? I don't know. They, they don't really explain this. It, it, it would make sense if we didn't actually actively exit the place, and this is what we found when, when, when we jumped down the chute. So, honestly, I, don't, I got nothing here. I got nothing. But at least this time, we actually are directly facing the Illuminati. They have not taken kindly to our intrusion. And are here to readily kick our ass. Well, unfortunately for them, I'm not quite certain they know who they're dealing with. So, uh... Stop freaking doing that, you virtual keyboard. Oh my god. It's never done this before in any other episode, guys. Just what is avail- and, um... Just anything that involves Illuminati. And it decides that it wants to pull this crap. So I apologize. Oops. When you think you're... in Cleric stance, but you're really not. There we go. So, down the laundry chute. And I'm going the wrong way. Whoops. So what are these barriers for inside Alexander anyway? And furthermore, are there functioning toilets and indoor plumbing in here? That is an interesting question. Or maybe a refrigerator or an oven or something. I mean, look at all the mechanics in here. So many cogs and bits and pieces. How about we break some of it? Like, who says we actually have to go to the core to dismantle it? Why can't we just start just randomly breaking stuff? Okay, that's a little bit dangerous with us still in it. But maybe we can set off a reaction, maybe the self-destruct button will be hit, or do some irreparable damage, although at the same time, I suppose you could argue, oh, well then they would suck either for the land to try to repair itself. We don't know, but it would be kind of interesting to, to have such a thing discussed. I mean, are we sure this thing even has a core which which to dismantle? We honestly have no idea about that either. They're just making stuff up that we assume to be there that may in fact not be there. Well, uh, well, of course, it's an RPG. You know, if they tell you about it, it's probably there. But 
that's the kind of information we aren't actually privy to. So it's just one example of the game explaining what we shouldn't actually even know in the first place. Like if we brainstorm that an idea among others that, hey, well, it's a machine, perhaps it has some kind of CPU on the inside that we can just simply flick the switch of. Okay, that, I get, that, that definitely seems reasonable, but what if it doesn't? Because remember, this thing is also a primal, a prac that pretty much everybody has forgotten by this point. So we have a bunch of gobby soldiers. I'm not sure what this one has taken to become so large. But the, our, their leader is nowhere to be found right now. So what do you think Alexander uses his room for? How did you guys get gob walkers in... That other thing that's in the background, I can't remember what the hell you guys called it. The, this gob machine thingy. But yeah, what you're supposed to do in here, which is going to be summarily ignored, is somebody is actually supposed to get in one of the other gob walkers in the corner and literally start yanking the bombs away from people. Okay, these things are pretty huge. Okay, nobody tell the Garleans about this because because th they might actually kind of steal this idea. Or maybe the Illuminati stole it from them. Maybe? I don't know. I do not know. But while we're on kind of on that topic, it, it would be a little bit nice if, if Sid or Biggs or Wedge actually commented on the goblins per chant for mechanics and engineering because this is not the first time we've seen things like the gob walker and the gob machine back there they've done this sort of thing before we have seen it now it's possible that the other members of the crew have, have not seen such a thing for themselves but at the same time you would think someone like Brayflox would actually tell him about that like they would learn about it somehow and maybe we could actually come up with a plan to undermine their technology maybe turn it against them anything like that or maybe disable their power source or anything no, but there, there's no such sort of discussion. Much to my disappointment. Like, I know, I know I complain a lot about such tiny little details that aren't really of consequence to the actual narrative in and of itself. But considering, you know, this world is, is so just, just, just very 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 meta and lore heavy um those are the kind of details that would be actually kind of handy to know and very interesting to know i mean they're they're seriously i mean i have a copy obviously there is a 300 page lore book that comes with this game and even well not comes with it but uh it's part of its merchandise selection they've written anniversary tales you know to help explain the gaps in certain things like, this, this is not a game that fails to explain things by any stretch of the imagination. So, I know you don't have time to necessarily explain absolutely, completely everything. But at the same time, there's so many things that, that could be explained or addressed in just a line of dialogue or two. And I'm really disappointed when I, when I see those moments and I, like, I can't unsee them. And I should probably be quiet right now about now because all this I'm ranting about has nothing to do with Alexander. 
Although, if truth be told, it is one of my biggest disappointments about Alexander in general, is that there is so much we don't know, and so much the game doesn't even attempt to explain to us. Once again, nothing of interest for us, so we're just gonna run the heck out of here. Actually, I'm gonna wait a second. So we beat up a bunch of gobbies, now what? Rocks, please. Sid, Sid, what are you doing in here? Sid? Will you guys at least call me if you're gonna come inside the deadly Aether Sucking Primal, please? Uh, she's looking for something, and if Rondrox is to be believed, it's the Enigma Codex. Yeah, yeah, I just said that. But wait, wait, that's where the cheese recipe came from? Ah. Oh. Well, something this large that's able to be mobile still is going to take a lot of energy, even if it's actually not in a primal form. What well, you could do literally anything with this kind of knowledge. Yes, everything could go wrong. That is why I don't want you guys in here. Well, I'm glad somebody acknowledged that this thing is in Primal, hence why it is extremely dangerous. Stop doing that. Stop doing- you are creeping me out. And who is he, by the way? Is he your brother? Your dad? Your best friend? Your next door neighbor? Your boss? I don't know. Hey, Ron Drogs, you fine? Oh, nope. Ooh. 
I would love to come treasure hunting with you, Rondrox. Absolutely adore it. Thank you for the invitation. And thank you for your glowy stone, by the way. Did we ever return that to you? Yeah, I know. They work you like a fucking cart chug, though. So, why don't you guys make sure she doesn't follow us anymore? Keep her safe over here. I can certainly understand not telling her how much trouble she's in and, and make her worry all the more, but at the same time, we shouldn't be letting her come in. Even if What's-Her-Face did say she'd watch her. What kind of problem? Said you walked out with us. Where did you go? What is the problem now? Oh? Um, well, we don't know they actually have a way behind the barrier. You're just guessing that. I mean, we got in once we once we knew the code to actually get in there. How do we know that they're, they're not getting in the exact same way and bypassing it that way? I mean, it's not too out there to assume that they might have a way behind behind the barrier, but we have not seen actual proof of that yet. Well, how bloody convenient. Why do they just leave the guard open just for another gobby, especially, you know, when, when you're trying to bait a potential spy, even though, again, we don't really have anything much to go on, that there is a spy on the outside, desperate to get back in. And are we absolutely so sure they know we've broken their code? I mean, we did get in, but it's not like we had to break a magical seal or, or anything of the like. How do they know we just didn't guess it by sheer dumb luck? I mean, it's not... Why did I actually go all the way over here? It, it's not very likely, but it, it's possible. It's also possible we just hit the thing hard enough and it just opened for us. You know, we could have just broken the damn thing and as a failsafe it unlocked itself. They don't, are they sure we know, they know this. You're, you're an engineer, Sid. You're supposed to think about these kinds of things. So what have we got for round three? Apparently Brayflux or somebody who looks and pretends to be like Brayflux. Let's wandered in here. Hi, remember us? We're the people who kind of shot you and made a couple of you blow up a little bit. You guys feeling a little bit butt hurt about that? Sorry about that, by the way. Yep, guys, just, just go ahead right and ditch me.
So I guess they're gonna investigate on the lower floors. We're gonna go upstairs. Why? Well, that's what the game mechanics have demanded of us. Not even a let's split up, you take care of the Illuminati, we'll worry about the spy. Nothing. I mean, I know you don't want a lengthy cutscene right here, but some form of plan of action would have been very nice. Ew. Where's that stuff coming from? These creatures pooping or something in here? So, so I get why these uh, these snail guys are in here because they're all around the hinterland. So it it seems only a bit natural that they some of them might find their way in here. But what's with the fish? And I would say what's with the the giant scorpion as well. But there does exist one as a hunt mark in the hinterland. So so we're just gonna pretend it's that guy or girl, if the case may be. We I don't know. Guys, I feel like I'm walk we're walking in circles here. Oh, wait, we totally are. Curse you, insurmountable waist high fence. Okay, did not expect to see Pepsi Man in here. Okay then. Did we have to have electrified water hanging around everywhere? Apparently I guess we do. Yeah, that stuff hurts by the way. Don't don't stand in it. I know we're the warrior and light and all, but but we're not immune from being electrocuted. Though it would be kind of interesting if we were. Like we had some kind of shock absorber to uh to kind of deflect that kind of stuff. That'd be kinda of useful. Although very niche I guess. Like like how often are we threatened to be struck by lightning or electrocuted? I don't know. But it would be a very effective way to actually kill us. Why am I even going over there with this? I do not know, guys. Seriously, do not know. Okay, stop farting water at me. It smells funny. So, in case that wasn't any indication, yes, this is the liquid flame for Final Fantasy V. Although, in the form of water instead of a flame. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. Guessing we're pretty resilient. Well, this is the normal mode, so. And Savage, that's pretty much a death sentence. Hey, 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 who said you could split in two? Who said? Who said? How did you do that? I mean, I guess he has two hands, but there was only one at first.
I think y'all know what's coming next. Now once again, I have absolutely zero explanation for what the hell this thing is doing in here. Like, was this part of, of the planned utopia to have such a thing? I honestly don't know. It's, again, it's just one of those things that, that's I've never actually elaborated on. And unlike the robots, which, which can be explained either way, I don't know how you explain a sentient and liquid creature. Like, like what use would, would, would you have for this in a moving fortress utopia? Did not mean to take that tether, I was not supposed to. I, I honestly don't have anything, guys. Uh, it's, the whole thing seems to be more of an homage than anything else. I mean, I know that some things in Coil were as well, but you, you pretty much got beyond that by by playing the, the elegant Chimera card, because they were very into doing such things, but... The Elegons were very known. This Enigma Codex is, is, is entirely a new concept to us. So, so, so we, as the Warrior of Light, don't have any sort of reference. Okay, it's filled with a ton of knowledge and everything like that, but... Yeah, and for, you know, giant robot fortress utopia, for all the world's scholars who reside in, But that's pretty much, like, all we know. Who wrote this? Maybe What's-Her-Face can, can expose it a little bit on this. You know, she she's actually read the Codex, so... Even though this is Primal Alexander, it may not be exactly the same as the Alexander written about in the Codex, I would imagine there would be a lot of similarities and I'd imagine any defense mechanisms this thing might have would be extremely useful to know. But nope, we're not going to get any of that. So, thanks for ditching me, everybody. Uh, hi. Can I pet your kitty? Wait, what? Oh, you little bastards! Uh, Sid, I don't think it's a good idea to piss them off right about now. Well... They technically only killed one so far. 
Okay, you could argue that it's one too many, but it's n not exactly like they have a massive body count and this was the last straw. Well, Sid, it's not like they can just unsummon it. Uh, yeah, but what happens when the world runs out of Aether? Alexander will as, as well. Did y'all think of that? Okay, so join you or fuck off. Okay. Girl, he wasn't talking about that. He was talking about their plans. So you're implying that the Illuminati had any empathy to begin with. Probably they didn't. See, now is where we should have learned about the core. Before we were completely unaware that it even had one, it, it, it was it was not a bad guess again to assume that he might have one being a machine. But this is the first confirmation we actually get of it. Yeah, why didn't we think of that before? I mean, she... Well, granted, it was in, in flavor text and not actually part of the quest. Uh, that she keeps track of where everything she finds is. Stop doing that. It's almost like you have a fetish for doing that. Oh, you're gonna get first you want to invite me on the treasure hunt now you actually want to give me a piece of your trip oh round rocks you're the greatest you are the greatest I love you Uh, yeah, gr the Twelves would, would like ha to have a word with you because they, they turn people away all the time and yeah, the forest will pretty much kick their asses and eat them alive. Yeah, the elementals do not fuck around. But not enough about that. Can you lead us to the core? How are we going to shut it down? Oh, like you haven't dropped a curse word and they are in their wedge. Okay, so we get another machine, I guess. Well, I've already 
spent a while beating the crap out of Gobby, so I guess it's about time we went back to giant robots. Except this one is all legs. And no trash, thank goodness. So, as we can see by the duty list, this is the manipulator. Even though you cannot actually target the manipulator itself as of yet. We gotta beat the crap out of his legs first. Maybe we can trip him up and he'll land on his face and an eye and be like, ow! And hopefully explode into bits of dust and whirly cogs. And maybe, maybe we'll have some awesome pieces of treasure for round rocks. That would be completely awesome. Now, I absolutely love this song. And I just love that it's an also in Gobby speak. So even though you can't really understand it that easily, considering the, the goblins obviously are a bit of the, of, the, of the subject of this raid, it seems only natural that they get some kind of voice. I mean, we do have both good and bad Gobbies on our side here. Well, not on our side, but participating in the plot, I guess is a better way to put it. So now that we have one of the legs a bit stunned, we can actually attack the manipulator itself. And he's gonna be like, ow, that hurts! Now, not that it's of much consequence, but I, I really almost wish that when, during the times, even though the manipulator is obviously, uh, as you can see, attacking you, to kind of go bit, have a bit more gameplay story segregation, that they would actually have something actively closing the eye and have it just open just very briefly for when it actually attacks you, because that would better help to explain why we have to sit here attacking the leg and not the actual core of the machine itself. Now what's really awesome and think and unfortunately we won't see it because I'm on the healer. Uh, two of the party members, a tank and a healer, are going to end up uh, being quarantined and they're gonna, I don't know if you can see one of the portals up there, but they're basically gonna be sucked into it and they have to take care of an ad before they're allowed to come back down. And it, when it first happens to you, it takes you completely off guard. But it will never take one of the healers. So unfortunately, we will not get to see it. So now with two of the legs down, now we will actually be able to attack the manipulator full time. I forget what this does. Mechanics are hard, guys. Don't even really care right now. Mechanics are hard, guys. We, we leave the engineers to that kind of stuff. So yeah, needless to say, we obviously have wiped the floor with this thing. Again, is this part of uh, defense mechanisms defined by the Igmanic Codex? Did, in part of the Utopia, did the goblins take that and adapt it in their own defense? I, I, I have absolutely no idea. And of course, we have to turn around and do a badass pose. Par for the course for beating giant robots, I guess. Yay! Look how fucking awesome we are! Uh, I do not want the shielding. I forgot which is the, uh, the fifth item. But it's a crafting mat, so we do not need to worry about that. Not at all! So, will this finally take us to the core that maybe we can shut it down? Assuming what's-her-face knows how. 
She probably remembers just enough that once she actually, you know, sees it and gets a little hands-on with it, she'll probably remember about it. I, I, I can actually buy and give her that. Sometimes we need a little, a little push to, to trigger certain memories. We don't remember everything about our lives all at once. How did you guys get in here? Kick it. you get up there? Seems awfully convenient that there would just be a switch just sitting on the top. Well, did it work? Maybe we should do something to make sure the gobbies don't actually come back in here, realize what's wrong, and turn the damn thing back on again. Because that would really be kind of crappy. Quick, somebody take the cat hostage. It's clear he cares about that thing. How do we know it's not just a bluff? I mean, they could be lying out their butts to Loris and do, um, kind of a false sense of... I, I can't think of the- I can't think of what, what what the words right now, but... By exploring the fact that, ha ha, I win even though we turned the core off, well, now we're gonna sit here expositing, hmm, why does he think he won? And now he has even more time to plot. Because even though we, we have shut off the core, again, what is preventing them from turning it right back on again? Well, frankly, nothing until we actually assure them that. And none of them are actually defeated or subdued or captured or anything of the like. They can just very easily just pick up the pieces and, and we'll be just right, right back where we started again. How do we know that that's not part of their plan? So yes, this place is called the Gordian Knot. Ha ha game, you made a funny. Of course the gobbies wouldn't give up. They attacked the friggin' Bray Fox's home all for the sake of a cheese recipe. Do you think they're gonna let a little thing like a core stop, core being turned off, stop them?
Where is Sid? You know, poor Round Rocks is only a child. Very innocent. Would we do more to protect her, make sure she's safe? Yeah, we'll do that. See? See, armed with the power of confusion. See, now you understand why they're not trying to kick our butts anymore. At least not directly. Because by keeping us busy, they can ensue chaos elsewhere. You people are dumb. Okay, I'm here. What's happened? Ron Roxy, you okay? Did they take your junk? Did we ever get back? Well, I suppose we're still using it to listen to their chatterings, but maybe we should give her back her glowy stone. Maybe that would make her happy. Sid? Pigs, put those down. Oh, well, well, that was resolved rather quickly. This whole place is Charlay in ruins. Yeah, we went through this a while ago. This is how we figured out that Alexander was the one who caused the earthquake three years ago. Take back your glowy stone, little one. Uh, why, why is it sparkling? Well, that explains why they're looking for it. Or rather, what they're looking for, I guess. But how would they know that... Ron Rox is the one who has it. You know, when you spoke of the Enigma Codex, I figured it was like an actual, like, book. And not something, well, that get broken up into pieces of fragments of rock. I don't know.
Alright, are you doing okay, Ron Rocks? I'm glad you got your glowstone back. Okay, can we go treasure hunting now? Well, I'm the warrior of light. Perhaps we have not met before. This is kind of what I do. So it, is is this the th the hymn she is referring to? Yes, and it's getting very creepy. Can you please knock that off? Uh, uh, no, you're the one who promised to keep an eye on her and keep her out of trouble. Uh, hi. I mean, I like Rod Rocks, and, and I do think she needs to be protected, but you are also the one who kind of offered that in the first place. Y you didn't specify it was only inside Alexander. Hi. Hi. Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Go ahead, scarpel off. And, and funny how we haven't yet again heard from Yastola. She, yeah, let's go and let's mess Toya for her help and then never hear from her again. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks. <laughs> 